My name is Anthony Anarino, and I'm the best-selling author of four books on the modern sales approach, starting with The Only Sales Guide You'll Ever Need, The Lost Art of Closing, Eat Their Lunch, and Elite Sales Strategies. I write a post at thesalesblog.com every day to help salespeople succeed, and I've spoken to, trained, or coached some of the largest companies in the world. I started selling newspapers when I was 12 years old. I knocked on doors and I asked people to buy a subscription. At 15, I started calling community leaders to ask them to do a charity event. I was the only person to win a deal. In fact, I got two deals. Not too many years later, I joined my family's business and started to sell. I've personally won hundreds of clients through cold calling. I've generated hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue by calling strangers to ask for a meeting. I can help you make a cold call and secure a first meeting. In this course, we're gonna look at why you should master cold calling, the goal of a cold call, a few variables to success, how to prepare to make your calls, the structure of a cold call with examples, and how to get past no. So let's start with why you should master cold calling. You may have heard people say that cold calling is outdated or ineffective, but more often than not, these individuals lacked experience, success, or they have an ulterior motive for discouraging you from using this technique. Let me tell you why you should master cold calling. Low yield on meetings, high yield on revenue. Here's the first truth you need to know to master cold calling. When you make cold calls, you need to know that you will have a low yield. That means you'll make a lot of calls to schedule a few first meetings. This can discourage salespeople because they don't know that most revenue in sales organizations comes from cold calling. You don't need to worry too much about people hanging up on you. They're just grouchy. Nor do you need to worry about making a call and not securing a first meeting. It doesn't mean anything other than you caught someone at a bad time. These outcomes don't mean anything about you or cold calling in general. Let's look at the next reason that you should master cold calling. If you send an email to your prospective client they are almost certain to ignore it, move it to their spam folder, or push the delete button and send it to wherever emails go after being deleted. Even though you will need to send emails and leave voicemails, these mediums are asynchronous, meaning you can't talk to each other in real time. These mediums are not useful when you're asking for a meeting. What makes the phone so valuable as a medium is that we can speak to each other opening the ability to ask for a meeting. The phone is the one medium that everyone always has with them at work, at home, and in the car. The third reason that you need to cold call is because it allows you to begin to position yourself as a peer. By calling your prospective client directly, you are demonstrating that you're not afraid to call them and ask them for a meeting. This will differentiate you from the millions of salespeople who send emails or try to pitch them on LinkedIn. You always wanna present as a peer, a person who can help the client improve their results. Later, you will be helping your client to pursue change and the better outcomes their business needs. You may as well start the process of being an advisor in the very first communication. Now let's take a look at the goal of a cold call. There are two reasons to make a cold call. It's likely that you will need the first, but not the second. The first is to acquire a meeting with your contact. That's the first reason to make a cold call, to schedule a meeting with a prospective client. When this is your primary outcome, you don't wanna ask questions or start a discovery call. Even though it feels like progress when your contact asks you a question, the most common outcome is that your contact will tell you they already have a supplier and have no reason to change. Later, when you book a meeting, a lot of the time, you'll find out that your contact does have reasons to change. Pitching the contact to buy. There are some sales organizations that make cold calls to sell the client their product or service. The rules here are opposite of the strategies you would use to book a meeting. Here, you'll wanna start a conversation, ask questions, and engage the client. Not only do I make cold calls, but I also take cold calls. It's a professional courtesy. HubSpot called me and shared how they could help me with my web strategy. We talked for 45 minutes and I ended up buying their sales and marketing platform. Another salesperson would have booked a meeting, but this rep shared insights with me, making it easy to have the conversation there and then. 
let's move forward and look at some variables to success in cold calling. The first variable is your confidence. Your contacts are listening to you speak, engaging whether or not they believe what you're saying. Human beings are finely tuned to notice when someone is uncomfortable or lack confidence. You can work on this by finding a role-playing partner who will let you call them once a day to pitch them for a meeting. You can return the favor by allowing them to cold call you once a day so that they can pitch you. You will be much more confident if you've rehearsed the cold call dozens of times before calling your contacts. Your first call to a contact should not be the first time you hear the words coming out of your mouth. The second variable is what you say, your talk tracks and your language choices. There are good talk tracks and bad talk tracks. You will find all kinds of people on LinkedIn sharing language choices that will harm your results when cold calling. Some of these people use cold calling to get attention by making outrageous claims. Let me share with you some of the bad talk tracks you should avoid. First, don't start by saying, how are you? Your contact doesn't know who they're talking to, while you do know who you are talking to, so it's rude to do that. Don't ask, is this a good time? Because the contact has no idea who you are or the nature of your call, it's easy for your contact to say, I'm sorry, it's not a good time. That didn't work out well for you. Is now a bad time? Isn't better? <laughs> a single yes, and your contact can hang up on you, or this one, have you heard of us? It's not good when they say they don't know your company, but what's worse, this does nothing to move you closer to a meeting. When you do get a contact on the phone, you don't want to offer them a meeting where you can tell them about your company and learn about their company. This lets your contact know that you are going to spend 20 minutes boring them to sleep with the history of your company. The third variable here, a really important one, your persistence. I called LCI Communications 76 weeks in a row, always on Monday. I left 75 voicemails before I reached my contact on the 76th time I tried. I had no strategy but persistence. My contact said, you have called me a million times. I said, this makes 76. He said, well, it felt like a million. Then he said, if you come over, I'll give you my orders. It took me seven years to win PetSmart because a gatekeeper refused to allow me to meet with the decision maker. As soon as she left for another job, I had a meeting and won a $2 million deal I kept for seven years. My peers thought I was crazy wasting my time until I showed up at the office with a contract. Making cold calls will require you to be patient, professional, and persistent. You should not expect to book a first meeting with a contact on the first dial. You will most likely need to make multiple contacts before you reach the client and schedule a first meeting. Sometimes you have perfect timing and catch your contact at the exact right moment. When pursuing enterprise level companies, it may take years to get a meeting. You wanna to stay top of mind and nurture these companies. Eventually, they will make a change and you want an invitation to compete for their business. Some of my largest clients took me years to win and I kept them many more years than it took to win them. Now let's get prepared to make cold calls. Sales scripts. Listen, we all know that using sales scripts can go horribly wrong. When I first got into sales, I was given a cold calling script. It consisted of a bunch of index cards collected into a tiny binder. Each card had tabs that were labeled with a prompt. The idea was that as your prospect came up with an objection to a meeting with you, you could flip to the corresponding tab and find the language you needed to overcome the objection. On my first or second day of calls, I was met with a prospect who interrupted me in the middle of the pitch and said, hey, you're reading from a script. Call me back when you don't need a script. The tabs couldn't help me with that one. Sales prospects are never going to have any confidence in you if you sound like you're reading from a script. But scripts aren't magic. You must get comfortable with them and practice with them over time. As I continued to make calls, I found it super effective to have access to effective language so I didn't feel as blindsided when objections came up. As my confidence and confidence grew, I found I didn't need the cards at all, but they were a huge crutch in the beginning. If you're new to sales, writing scripts is a good exercise in making sure you are on point and have a clear and concise message. If writing scripts is old hat for you, remember that it's still helpful to revisit your language and make updates now and then. 
taking the time to think about the language, writing it down and rehearsing it will build your confidence and your competence. Preparing to make cold calls. Prospecting isn't a numbers game. Some people believe that sales is a numbers game. They believe that more calls is all it takes to book meetings. This is not true. Sales and prospecting is a game of strategy and effectiveness. You're always better sharpening your strategy and improving your talk tracks than trying to grind out meetings without a great strategy, something I'll share with you soon. But first you need to do some work to get ready. And we do that by starting by building a list of strategic targets. Before you can make your calls, you first need to do some research on the companies in your territory, the contacts with titles that suggest they're concerned about the better results they need. Unless you have a database with contact emails and phone numbers, this research will be difficult. You can call the main number, but it isn't as fast to build your strategic targets. Now let's look at the structure of a cold call. The first thing you want to do when making a cold call is to tell your contact who you are in the name of your company. Because you are not yet friends, you don't need to start with pleasantries like how are you. Next, provide the reason for your call. You need to tell the contact why you are on their telephone. This is polite and professional. You have an agenda, and that agenda is to schedule a meeting. If we stopped here, you would have an awful time getting a meeting. What you need to do is trade value for the client's time. The secret to gaining commitments requires that you trade something valuable enough that your contact can agree to the meeting. It can't be something like telling the client about your company or asking about theirs. Instead, you have to offer your contacts insights about their business. If this sounds difficult, don't worry. I'm gonna walk you through the entire script and help you identify what you can share with your clients that will position you as an expert and an authority in your industry. But before we get to examples, we need to add one more component, the risk reversal. The last part of this strategy is to provide a risk reversal. Something like, even if there are no next steps for me, you'll have our briefing. You can also remove the client's risk by asking for 25 minutes, a short amount of time, allowing the client to leave if you aren't creating value. Let's look at my cold call script. My cold call script goes like this. Hi, my name is Anthony Anarino with B2B Sales Coach and Consultancy. I'm calling you today to ask you for a 25 minute meeting where I can share with you our Q2 executive briefing on the four trends that are already causing sales organizations to struggle. I'll also share with you some of the questions we are asking and answering with our clients. Even if there are no next steps for us, you'll have the slide deck and you can share it with your team. What do you look like this Thursday afternoon? The first thing you might have noticed was that the script is not short. What should have captured your attention is the executive briefing that I'm trading for the meeting. But you don't have to use an executive briefing. There are different variations you can use. One thing that you could say is, I will share with you the four factors that you need to consider to improve your results in this area. You could also say, I'll share with you the three mistakes people make when trying to improve this result and what's working now. You can also say, I will share with you our best practice checklist for this particular outcome. All of these things will work. No matter what, you can expect your contact to say no before they say yes to a meeting. So let's talk about how we get past no. Your contacts are going to use several objections to avoid taking a meeting. You will hear, we are not interested. We're happy with our current provider. We don't have a budget. We're too busy now. Try me back next quarter. And can you email it to me? None of these objections are real. There's only one reason your contacts say no, and it's because they only have one concern. So let's talk about the single objection and the real concern. The only concern that stops your contact from giving you a meeting is that they believe you're going to waste their time. The reason they believe you're going to waste their time is that because most salespeople do waste their time, they don't want to take meetings anymore. So here's what you have to do to get past no. You must directly address the client's concern by telling them that you won't waste one minute of the 25 minutes and that they will find the time was well used and that it will be helpful for them. That is the strategy and it does work as long as you say exactly what you need to say and make sure that they understand that you're not gonna be a time waster. Now we have to have a difficult conversation for just a minute on how to ensure your success. You will do well cold calling every day. 
For most B2B salespeople, 90 minutes is enough for them to be capable to produce the meetings that will give them the opportunities that they need. But you can get in trouble if you don't do the right work in the right way at the right time. The reason you need to cold call every day is because it takes time to win deals. You can't control the sales cycle. The opportunities you create in one quarter will often close in the next quarter. You will see some of your peers get in trouble by avoiding making cold calls. They go weeks or months without making their calls. Then they try to cram their prospecting into a short period of time, but because they didn't create the opportunities in time to be able to win those deals, they're not going to win. This won't happen to you because you know that you need to prospect every day. In this short course, you learned why you should want to master cold calling. It's what will generate the largest part of your revenue. The phone is the only synchronous medium we have to ask for a meeting while also positioning you as a peer. After that, you learned the two goals for cold calling. If you're pitching the client, you want to start a conversation. But for our purposes here, the goal is to book a meeting. We moved on to learn about the variables to your success. Your confidence, your talk tracks, and your persistence all impact your results. From there, we talked about the importance of sales scripts. At this point, we started to prepare for cold calling by making sure you know it isn't a numbers game and it is in fact an effectiveness game. You start by building a list of your strategic targets. The most helpful part of this course for you may be the structure of the cold call and the examples and the strategies to get past the first no. If you wanna succeed in B2B sales, your commitment to make calls for 90 minutes each day will do more for your results than a lot of other things that you might do with that time. I'm Anthony Anarino. I wanna thank you for taking this course. To follow my work, go to thesalesblog.com and sign up for the newsletter. Now do good work, and I hope to see you on another course.